Okay, so uh, we're now recording the webinar um, with the I Will campaign and Andy Chagger from Step Up to Serve organization. So thank you for your interest in the webinar. Thank you for either viewing the recording online or for those of you um, guys at live dialed in now. Thank you for joining. Just to get, give a bit of um, context to what this is all about and, and why we are doing this. Um, Andy will go into more detail in a minute about what the I Will campaign is all about and, and what you're trying to achieve. Um, but there seems to be clear um, synergy and clear links with um, some of the work that we do as CSPs. And um, it seems to me that there's, there's a natural partnership to be made there, um, both on the national scale, but also, also on a local CSP scale too. So um, the way this partnership has, has grown really is um, I've met with the organisation a couple of times and that led to Andy coming along to the last National Volunteer Leads meeting a few weeks ago. And our aspiration really um, is for us as a network to agree um, our own number of pledges that will support the I Will campaign. So at the National Volunteer Group, we just kind of had a bit of a discussion about if that's something we should do, and we agreed it would be. Um, but we also agreed via that meeting and also a subsequent webinar that throughout this process of creating these pledges and, and creating this partnership with the I Will campaign, that we should try and involve the network as much as we can and, and the purpose of today's um, presentation will be for you to have an input into that as well as you raising your awareness of the I Will campaign too. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about what those pledges might look like afterwards. It'd be better if Andy gives his context first and hopefully it'll start to form some ideas in your mind. You can start to see the natural link and the natural next step in, in what that might look like in, in us as a network, um, agreeing some pledges that we will aspire to. Um, so, is there anything else? I think that's it. I've made Andy the, the presenter, so hopefully you can all see a, a PowerPoint on your screen. If, if you can't see a PowerPoint on your screen, um, just send me a message in the chat box and we'll try and resolve yes. that. You should be able to see the I Will um, presentation on your screen. So um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll hand over to you now, Andy, and mm. whenever you're happy, if you want to go ahead, we, we should be fine. All right, thank you, Lee. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you, Andy. That's fine. Yeah, we're failing. Okay, so I'm just pushing into presenter view now, so I can't actually see the chat box. Is it your um, but really, really... Unless I hear otherwise, I'll assume that, that everyone can hear and, and see okay. Um, so, yes. So, hi, everyone. Thanks for uh, taking the time to, to listen today. Uh, my name is Andy Chagger, and I'm the Voluntary and Public Sector Manager for Step Up to Serve. Uh, and that's the charity that coordinates the I Will campaign. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the campaign today and also the, the case for youth social action in general. Um, and I'll hopefully in the course of that give you a few insights into how you might more effectively engage young people in, in the great work that you're doing. Um, I also want to suggest some ideas for the CSPN's member directed pledge, which Lee was just talking about a moment ago. And, we're, we're very excited about, about receiving when it's ready. Um, I'll also do my best to answer any questions you've got at the end. Um, but I'll ask if you could leave them until I'm finished with the main content. That would, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so first of all, starting with the basics at the question I mean by youth social action. Well, the definition that we use is practical action in the service of others to create positive change. Uh, uh, now that's a pretty broad definition, um, but some obvious examples include things like volunteering or fundraising for a charity or community group. Uh, it can also include things like campaigning for or raising awareness of causes that young people care about. Um, but social action isn't just 
limited to formally organized activities and um, our definition also includes informal work like a young person befriending an older person in the community or perhaps helping to mentor a peer at school and um, so as i say it is a is a quite a broad ranging definition now i was originally hoping to show you a quick video uh, now from the campaign's launch and this this features young people themselves talking about what social action means to them um, however, the, uh, the connection's a little bit laggy, so I think rather than try and play it now, what we're going to do is we'll circulate the presentation after the fact, um, and then you can, you can just watch that video in your own time. Okay, so I hope that some of you um, have at least heard a little bit about the I Will campaign, um, but I wanted to spend just a little bit of time talking about how it started and, and what we we're aiming to achieve exactly. So in 2012, uh, the Prime Minister at the time, David Cameron, asked Dame Julia Cleverdon and a lady called Amanda Jordan OBE uh, to perform a review into how young people could be better supported to engage in social action. And after a lot of consultation with cross-sector organisations, both in the, in the UK and internationally, uh, a report was published um, that highlighted some of the barriers uh, involved and also some recommendations to, to overcome them. So some of the barriers included a shortage of opportunities for young people. Uh, in some cases, there was also confusion about what quality youth social action looked like. Now, I'll come back to that quality point later on, um, but the report also identified the absence of an overarching coherent, coherent vision uh, to drive forward the changes needed for youth social action to become the norm for all young people. of all of this that the I will campaign in 2013 um, and we're fortunate to have the support of those and, uh, and of the three main party political leaders at the time. Now while those leaders have all moved on in the time since um, the campaign is still fortunate to enjoy cross-party support uh, and over 700 partners from across UK society have also made tangible pledges of support. So moving on to exactly what it is that we're trying to achieve exactly. Well, our ambition is to make social action a part of life for 10 to 20 year olds across the UK. And specifically, we're aiming to move from a baseline of 40% participation to 60% participation when the campaign ends in 2020. Now, sometimes that means about one and a half million more young people taking part. And we've also identified three sub goals that underpin and support the main target. So firstly, we need to ensure that all young people have the opportunity to take part regardless of their backgrounds. And the data shows that young people from more affluent backgrounds are much more likely to take part than those from less affluent circumstances. And if we hit our main target of 60%, then we'll still have failed in our eyes if it's just the usual suspects taking part. Secondly, we also want to increase the frequency of participation because getting more young people involved is a great start, but what we really want to do is make social action a habit for life. And finally, we also want to increase the quality of opportunities that are available. And again, that's going to be something that I'll come back to in more detail later on. Now, overall, these are all really ambitious goals and we recognise they'll only be achieved by engages, engaging with leaders from across society, and that includes those in government, business and education. But we also know that the sports sector includes role to play as well. So the next thing I want to talk about is why we think you should do even more to support youth social action. Now, before joining Step Up Serve, I ran a small charity for about nine years, and if I was looking at it in terms of the business case, then I view social action as a great way to engage with the next generation of volunteers, fundraisers, and as they grow up, donors as well. However, in the most general terms, the campaign frames the case for supporting youth social action in terms of a double benefit. So firstly, high quality youth social action can make a real impact to the cause in question. Secondly, it also helps young people to develop character and skills in the process. Now, we have loads of examples of the former, and 
in some great great case studies that we can point people to. Uh, and we also have quite a lot of evidence re um, relating to the second as well that I'll come back to uh, in a little bit later on. Now, there was another video here that I, I wanted to show looking at some of that evidence, but again, we'll we'll circulate this after the fact so that you can you can have a look uh, and watch it in your own time. Okay, so the the next thing I want to come on to is is some of the evidence and the the data we have available. Now, a lot of what we have comes from research by Ipsos Mori, who conducted an a youth social action survey each year, each year to measure the campaign's progress. So for example, in the, the survey last year, which was published in November of 2016, the data showed that 42% of young people participated in meaningful social action. 16% took part infrequently, and 42% didn't get involved uh, based on the definitions that are showing on the screen here. Now, the data also it gives us information on the types of social action undertaken um, and one thing I just wanted to point out here was that fundraising or taking part in a sponsored event uh, was the most popular choice at 43% um, and you can see some of the other choices listed on the screen here as well. Now the data also shows the socio-economic gap I talked about earlier and youth, social, youth participation amongst the most affluent households uh, was well above the average at 49% last year, uh, and among the least affluent, it was below the average at 40%. Now, that gap has closed a lot since 2014, um, but it's still there, and it remains a big focus for us and the campaign moving forward. And the data also gives us some insights into how we might continue to reduce the gap. For example, in the most affluent households, it turns out that parents are the biggest motivator for young people to get involved, but at the opposite end of the spectrum, it's actually teachers that play a much bigger role. And the Ipsos Mori data, uh, as well as other research from the Behavioural Insights team, uh, we can demonstrate the benefits to, to young people, and they include things like improved resilience, empathy, team working, attitudes to education, and general well-being. Okay, so hopefully that's that's covered the case, albeit briefly, for more youth social action opportunities. Um, but now I want to go back to the campaign's other two sub-goals, which are to increase the frequency of participation, um, and also next to that and underpinning it, increasing the quality of the opportunities that are available as well. Now, to help us understand the former, we're fortunate to have the support of the University of Birmingham's Jubilee Centre for Character and Virtues. And last year, the centre surveyed over 4,500 young people to help understand how we can make youth social action a habit for life. Now, the survey included a range of questions, and overall respondents were classed as either having a habit of social action, participating but without a habit, or not participating at all. And again, you can see the definitions that we used on the on the slide. Now, from that survey and from some more detailed follow-up interviews, the research was able to identify some general characteristics among young people who demonstrate that key habit of social action. So, for example, those with a habit were more likely to have started their social action journeys from a young age. They were also more likely to have family or friends involved in the same type of activities and be supported through school, college or university. Now, there's other characteristics listed here, but the one I want to focus on now is that young people with a social action habit were more likely to have participated in high quality social action than those without a habit. So now I want to look at what we mean by quality. Now, the review and the consultation that preceded the launch of the campaign agreed a set of six principles that help us define this. The Jubilee Centre survey questions were also framed around these. So, for example, starting at one o'clock on partly defined as being challenging for those involved, and it should encourage them to go further than they might initially think possible. 
It should also be youth led and take into account young people's ideas as well as their needs. And ideally, it should give young people an opportunity to take on leadership roles as well. There should also be a clear social impact to a community cause or challenge and not just be an activity for its own sake. Now, this is something that resonates particularly strongly with me because prior to joining Step Up Serve, I worked as an international volunteer. I sadly saw some cases of volunteers busy. And I think speaking from experience, I don't think these projects were either beneficial to either the communities involved. Lies pretty quickly, it was just busy work. And I think a lot of were put on volunteer again as a result. Moving on, high quality EU social action should also be both progressive and and it should also be accessible to everyone. And finally, high quality social action should also offer an, op offer an opportunity for reflection. And that's both to recognise people's contributions, but also to consider what can be learned from the experience. Now, I think some of you have already seen these principles, but I really recommend that you try and keep them in mind during both the pledging process and your, your work overall. Andy, it's, it's Lee here. Just stop you there a minute. Yeah. Um, we're just getting a few, it's happening to me as well, a few comments that your um, audio is dipping out now and again. Um, oh, sorry. I, can, I, can okay. still, I, I can still make out the bulk of what you're saying, so I presume everyone else <clears throat> is the same. Um, I suggest we carry on because, like I say, I'm, I'm getting the majority of what you're saying and it's dipping out every now and again. But just to make you aware, sometimes some of those messages you, you're putting out might not be being picked up by everyone. Um, so what I do is I, I suggest we carry on. Um, hopefully it will um, it will get better and certainly not get worse. But if there's anything that anyone is completely unclear on, um, just shout out or or send a question via the text box and um, I'm sure we'll we'll get there in, in the end. So sorry to interrupt, Andy, but if, just to just to flag that with you if you if you want to carry on. Yeah, no no problem. Okay, so um, a couple of other things that um, I'd ask you to consider in terms of the in terms of your so any related work that you're doing. Um, so first of all, I'd ask you to think about developing new opportunities for young people, um, and that's both by offering a greater number of roles. Um, and also making those roles more inclusive, such as by lowering the minimum age or any minimum age you have for volunteering. I'd also ask you to think about the, the breadth of social action. Uh, now, I mentioned earlier that, that volunteering is an obvious example, um, but our definition also includes activities like fundraising. And the data I discussed earlier shows that's, that's really one of the most popular choices for young people. Another idea is to think about embedding youth leadership in your organization. Um, now, this isn't a straightforward issue, but a real way to champion the youth leadership principle is to commit to welcoming young people onto your governance board. And I think that can also help with your own relevance and sustainability as well. Um, for example, charity commission research suggests that the average age of a trustee is 57, and without younger trustees, boards risk lacking diversity and losing touch with beneficiaries and, and wider society as well. Now, working with schools is also a great option. As I, as I said earlier, schools are a, a really important way into social action for, for young people, particularly amongst less affluent households. Um, so this can be a great way to engage with young people that are traditionally harder to reach. And on that point, sports can also be a great way to engage harder to reach young people based on their general interests rather than the particular cause. So there's likely some natural alignment um, there in terms of your own pledge. And finally, I'd also I'd love it if you can also think about raising awareness on behalf of the campaign um, and young people over uh, overall. Uh, I will is a partner led campaign and we're reliant on people like you to spread the word amongst your own networks. 
Um, so please do think about how you can promote the importance of youth social action and the positive role that young people can play. And that, that includes by celebrating um, young people that are already involved in your work. So one last thing I wanted to just draw your attention to um, is I Will Week 2017, which is, which is fast approaching now. Now this runs from November 20th to November 24th, and it, it marks the anniversary of the, of the campaign. Um, we use the week to celebrate the work our partners are doing, um, and also to basically help refocus and galvanize efforts for the year ahead. So if, if there's any chance that your pledge would, could be announced during the week, um, that would be incredible. Um, but there are other ways to take part as well, um, such as by giving us a general shout out on social media, or if you do happen to have any events going on, um, you know, just having some shout outs to the campaign and its goals there as well. And there's a, there's a link on this slide to our I Will Week webpage, where you can find more general information and upload any, any details. So that's about it from me, and I, I hope you could hear enough um, and that it, it was helpful, and I'm, I'm now happy to, to try and answer any, any questions that you have. Yeah, thanks, for that, Andy. It's, it's Lee again here. So um, I, the audio was better for me af after I interrupted, so hopefully um, it was okay for everyone else as well. Um, and hopefully you can hear me all right as well. I don't know if it's the connection at my end or at your end, Andy, not sure. But um, just one of those things with, with uh, webinars, you always run that risk. But, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to, to the ways of doing these things. And it's normally in terms of efficiency and getting the messages out there. So this is what we like to do. And hopefully everyone got the bulk of, of what you were saying. I, I heard probably 90, 95 percent of what you were saying. Hopefully that's similar to everyone else. But. Yeah, if there are any um, questions you'd like to ask Andy, um, please feel free. I, I'm going to talk in a minute a little bit about how we might get involved in this and, and your thoughts on that too. But um, if you've got any questions, uh, either I'll give you a minute now to unmute yourself or send something via the chat box. Okay, D, I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute, if that's okay. I'll, uh, when I start to talk about how we might get involved, I'll, I'll talk about what that might look like. But yeah, it's a point we did talk about in the National Volunteer Group, so um, certainly take that on board, but I'll, I'll mention that in a minute, if that's okay. Uh, anyone got anything else, specifically to the I Will campaign and Andy's presentation? Okay, I'll go ahead now then. Um, if there is anything comes up as I'm talking, then <clears throat> feel free to ask. So, um, for those of you who didn't catch it at the beginning, it's it's, um, it's Lee here from um, CSPN, partnership manager covering Charlie Crane's maternity leave. Um, so, um, a bit of context for those that might have missed it at the beginning, because I know there were a couple of people late in. Um, we spoke about the I Will campaign at our last National Volunteer Leads meeting and Andy came along and had an agenda item at that meeting and we had a um, fairly big discussion as a group about what we, we might do as a network um, to support the I Will campaign and what we could realistically do and how that might um, benefit us as, as a network and how it might link to some of the national direction that Sport England are going with this as well. So, um, before I do that, Di, 
Uh, Andy, if you, can you see that question from Dyke? Would it be possible to be linked with local ambassadors? I'm not sure. Yeah, I can see you. Go on, Andy, sorry. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. So, um, so the question from Deke, are you talking about I will ambassadors um, or something else? Okay. Uh, yeah, it may, it may well be possible to, to link in to I will ambassadors. Um, so for, for those of you who perhaps aren't familiar, um, every year during I will week, um, we announce 50 new I will ambassadors. Um, these are often nominated from partner organizations, um, but it's, a, it's an open process. People can be nominated in general. And, and these are some fantastic you know living case studies um, if you will of of you know the the, the capacity and, and potential of young people uh, to create change and uh, and we do like to you know as part of their um as part of their journey as ambassadors we do like to give those young people exposure and the opportunity to go to different events and, and talk about their experiences and um, so yeah i mean i think it just depends the ones you know who's in your area uh, what kind of event you're thinking but what I can do is is connect you to a gentleman called Sam Newell who is our um, he manages the ambassador program for us um, and Sam can probably give you kind of the the, the most direct uh, answers as to um, how to, to go about making that connection basically okay thanks Andy um... Hopefully that answers your question, Di. So yeah, if you could send that through, Andy, that'd be good, and um, we can pick that up. Yeah, good point, Di. Thanks, thanks for the question. So, um, in terms of Sean, I'll come to your question in a minute, if that's okay. Um, in terms of what we could do as a network on the I Will campaign um, at the volunteer group, there was there was certainly a a uh, feeling in the group that we would like to um, do something to support the campaign and we decided that something would be to create some pledges that we will aspire to as a network so to answer to partly answer your question d in terms of um our capacity and what we could realistically do um across the next a uh, couple of years and also in I will week we would probably see these pledges as an aspiration and not a formal sign up process and then for um, CSPs to um, support the campaign and support the pledges as they um, see fit locally and as they um, best possibly can um, reasons for that you know not becoming like a formal sign up or getting lists from everyone about what they will be doing etc all the rest of it the, the kind of one the, the the time that we're in you know the, the period of change that we're going through with csps and two the fact that um volunteering and, and bearing in mind this is only a part of social action but volunteering um isn't explicitly referenced at the moment in the work that CSPs are doing and there's there's a relative lack of um, program funding for volunteering uh, in comparison to the rest of CSP uh, programs and the primary role funding so the idea was that it would be an aspiration to um, to work towards a number of pledges that we create nationally but that doesn't mean that csp couldn't go ahead and create their own pledges locally anyway so if you felt that the national pledges weren't right for you or you felt you could do more then you could actually um, create your own pledges locally too so we want to be quite open and quite flexible with it but really to get it out there on people's radar and have people uh, have it in people's minds and have them working towards um, these pledges. So in terms of time scales uh, at the national group, we, we thought it would be good to work towards I Will Week and announce the pledges uh, during I Will Week. So that, that would 
uh, be a nice little link and it might get us a bit more awareness and publicity too. And um, in a minute, I'll give you some examples of pledges that, that you may or may not be aware that Sport England have created that they're going to um, pledge to I will. And then, and then I'll tell you about what our thoughts are and what we could have as a network. So, uh, Andy, was this, did you want to add anything there in, in those thoughts I've just given? Yeah, I mean, I don't, um, thank you, I don't want to uh, detract or distract too much from the, um, the pledging process because um, you know, that, that's a, a great goal in, in our eyes. But, you know, it's also, I think, just to reiterate that, you know, even simple things like um, joining in the conversation on social media um, during the week, and I can send you, Lee, we have a, we'll have a digital comms pack going out fairly soon that includes things like example tweets and um, you know and if, if any of the any of the organizations do have any young people involved and you know you want to just kind of give them a shout out for the work they do they're, they're also little things that can be happening for you know hopefully not too much effort and it just helps build the energy and momentum basically yeah, definitely. Great. Thanks for that, Andy. Um, so that might be a good time as well. So, Sean, so you're asking if CSP's done anything directly with the campaign to date. I'm not aware that they have. Um, are you aware of any any local CSPs that have done anything yet, Andy? There may have been some kind of, you know, social media stuff that's kind of gone under the radar a bit, but I'm not aware of anything uh, myself. Are you, Andy, at the minute? I'm not. Um, I can certainly have a look into that. Um, so we have, um, again, this is maybe something we can circulate if you think it's useful. So we have a, a full pledge wall on our website, um, and it includes all the all the 700 plus partners on there. So I could I could also check to see if there's anything anything been made, but to my knowledge, there hasn't been. Okay, thank you. And um, th there is something that, that CSPs have been uh working on which which works towards the um six principles of, of youth social action the i will campaign and that is in the um if anyone were was involved with dfe volunteer funding for the school games um a month or so ago was it now maybe a bit longer um sport england have now included at the top of that form um, six questions, each one linked to uh, each of those six um, principles of the I Will campaign for youth social action. So it's there, it's on the agenda already. So CSPs have been prompted into thinking about this specifically to the DFE uh, volunteer funded programme for school games. So that was another reason really to have people um, involved in these discussions and thinking about having it on the radar for for your work as a CSP. So um, what I would suggest is if this, if this is a piece of work you are interested in, if, if you if you weren't aware of that application to the DfE volunteer uh, fund, maybe have a chat with your colleague who was the lead on that and and get a bit of awareness and see uh, see if there are any potential links or developments in the future. Um, I'll just read this from Active Devon. OK, thanks for that. I think I think that went out to everyone from Tom and Lou. So you've had an I will campaign uh, from about a year ago and um, been pushing some of that promotion. So that's great. Thank you very much. Thanks for that feedback. So uh, what I would say is there any anything that, that, I, that I say now has, has gone it's gone through the national volunteer group if there's anything you you want to you disagree with or would like to ask more about um now is your chance do it now but you've also got the opportunity outside of this to speak to me or to speak to your uh, regional rep too well we, yeah we kind of said we'll we'll try and create these pledges and um, a good starting point would be the Sport England pledges that are now out there. So just to give you an example of what these are, because it, this is when I first um, looked at the I Will campaign, I, you know, I wanted to see examples of what pledges could be and what that could look like. And the Sport England ones, I think, are quite good. And you can, you can hopefully see where we might have very similar pledges too. 
<clears throat> so um, if you Google it, you'll find this. It's just um, I will sport England pledges. But I've got them in front of me here so I can read them out. The, the, number, the number one pledge, which um, we certainly won't be able to do, but Sport England have done, is to say that they will match the 1.5 million invested through the I Will Fund, through the Sport England Potentials Fund to support youth social action. So Sport England kind of put the money where the mouth is there. I'm not expecting CSPs to go out and do this and start matching money to this unless you feel it's right locally, of course. Uh, number two, inspire and support our partners to adopt the six principles of youth social action. OK. Number three, share insight on social action and join the conversation about how to drive excellent experiences for volunteers and recipients. Number four is to actively celebrate young people who lead social action and recognise their contribution to both themselves and the community. And then number five, act as an ambassador for the I Will campaign and encourage partners to help grow youth social action. So you're probably thinking as I was reading those out, well, you're already doing some of that stuff. Um, so it perhaps be about us articulating the fact that what we are doing does already link to the I Will campaign and the potential for us to then promote that and gain a bit of traction on social media, etc., which does link to I Will. Um, and you you would have hopefully got the message there that really a lot of that, those pledges at Sport England, come up, which, are, which, which I think as a network we could have similar, was just about sharing the message and acting as an advocate and trying to influence partners in including the principles of youth social action into their work so the, the action that, that came out of um, the national volunteer leads meeting was for us to work kind of virtually on what these pledges will look like and um, and then launch as I say in the I will week at the end of November so depending on time scales and just depending how all this how all this works um, you may well have the opportunity to feed into what these pledges look like uh, via your regional rep. If they don't proactively go out and contact you, um, it might be an idea for you to speak to them if it's something you do want to be involved with. But really, just to reinforce that point, I would certainly say it it will kind of have we'll have those national pledges and aspirations, but then there'll just be that local flexibility on what you think you can realistically do, if anything at all. And um, also the opportunity for you to go above and beyond that as well to create your own pledges um, as a CSP. So really, I, I mean, that's where we're up to. I think um, that's kind of what we agreed by the group and we agreed that we should do this webinar to raise um, awareness a little bit more across the network and not just all of a sudden announce these pledges without you guys uh, being aware of it and what it all means and where it's come from so hopefully that all makes sense if there are any questions I'll give you a minute or two now to fire those over or as I say you can speak to me or regional reps separately uh, but really, I think that was everything I wanted to say. Was there anything else, Andy, that you want to say or anything that I might have missed while we wait for any other questions or comments? No, I think it's maybe just to reiterate kind of one of the points you just made, uh, Lee, that, you know, a lot of this, you know, you may already be doing, um, you know, some of this work may already be going on. It's, I think, you know, it's, that, that's fantastic. And, and thank you. I think the, then, you know, the next step is, is, you know, shouting about it a little bit more and, and promoting it and try and encourage others to do likewise. Um, so, so no, other than that, and just to, you know, thank everybody again for their, for their, their interest and, and support i think I'm, I'm good thank you okay great well we've had no further questions so um i'll take that as a good sign for now and <laughs> hopefully um uh, there won't be too many um uh, too much confusion from perhaps some of the audio dropping out or too many more questions to be answered oh uh, one more question before we do go before anyone leaves sean she said what age does i will cover it's 10 to 20 year olds isn't it andy is that right so that's that's the age that we measure in the ipsos mori survey and um, but we do we do work outside those age ranges so for example um I, we have an education strand and that that includes work with 
primary schools because again it links back to some of that research and how important it is when when people are starting their their social action journey young um you know so we we, we go down below the, the 10 10 year old um on one side and we go past 20 in terms of some of the partners and things it's just for the for the survey we have to have something to measure and that's defined as 10 to 20 but that's that's by no means kind of excluding work outside of that brilliant thanks for that sean and yes that sounds good that will you just give about working with housing associations so yeah, yeah sounds great okay so um i just wanted to thank andy again for giving up the time and, and presenting um and hopefully now yeah the, the next time we'll hear anything nationally will be the the um, announcement of the pledges in in i will week but apart from that thank you to everyone again as well for your interest in dialing in i know when um, people's time is stretched at the moment and volunteering and or, or social action isn't necessarily at the top of everyone's list at the moment so um thank you all for dialing in and um hopefully see you see many of you soon thank you lee Cheers. Thanks very much. Bye, everyone. Bye now.